Okay, Keith here from Beat the Casino. Again with Kevin uh, out in Las Vegas today. Uh, you get, how, what's the temperature out there today, Kevin? Is it warm out there today in Vegas, buddy? Uh, it's going to just be 100 degrees and, uh, <laughs> you know, sunny. But it's a dry heat. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Isn't that what they say? So anyway, listen, uh, we wanted to get together today and talk about what I consider uh, one of the most important things about uh, being able to play successful Bakra is to be able to identify the moving target that it is and what strategy fits into that uh, to overlay over the short period of time that you have to grab an advantage, you know. And a lot of things uh, in, in Baccarat world uh, that we talk about, a couple of things uh, most important that maybe a lot of people understand is some of the road systems, you know. Uh, of course, the real popular ones, and they go by different names, you know, and they all have their place. You should, you should understand and know them all uh, so you understand how the strategy of winning kind of evolved. But the, the first one and the most common, and I don't know if you know it by any other name. I mean, I've always known it by time before last. Have you? What, what do you know it by, Kevin? Is that pretty much what you know it by time before last? Well, I know it by time before last because that's how it's referred to on the forum. Yes, yes, absolutely. Be, um, before I got on the forum, though, I, I didn't, I never thought about it. I didn't know that it was actually like something you should do. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, as a moving, you know, when, when I talk about the moving target, we specifically uh, look at a Baccarat game of uh, the statistics that we talk about are opposites and repeats. We don't, that's, I mean, sometimes with some of the strategies like strong side, uh, when we identify that, we, we talk about banker and player, but we look at it statistically from an opposite. Did it go opposite? Or did it repeat? Um, and also about one in a rows, two in a rows, and three in a rows. Kind of, you know, some simple statistics like that. But the idea that the game is a moving target and you have to know which statistic at this time is significant is the trick to winning at Baccarat. Like, and, th and that's why we have all the road systems, but they're minimally effective only in specific areas of the game at least that's what i find and of course time before last is one of the uh most uh most used or most the one that you see the most used if you walk around and analyze how players are playing so um anyway what, what when you started in your evolution of becoming successful at it, how did you start, Kevin? I know you played in Macau initially first. Did, did you? What statistics and what, what sort of analysis did you do? Did you learn systems? How did you evolve into the great player you are today? Well, I spent the first 15 years basically playing regression to the mean, which okay. means the, the uh, statistics all have to average back out to 50-50 okay. or very close there too. I see, I see. And what I realized was is I was actually kind of playing in reverse because while they do that over a period of a lot of games, they don't do it over a period of just, you know, uh, uh, one game or ten hands or whatever. And the uh, ability and the, uh, 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 the thought process that goes behind recognizing what is the bias, whether it's time before last or anything else, is critical. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I learned from the forum. Yeah, and I, I think to your point there, too, is that, he, and, and when we talk about this, we get such pushback from uh, from folks who, who uh, really probably are not members of our forum. But and you see the comments, uh, you know, in, in YouTube. It's like someone will blurt out, you know, uh, mathematically what the odds are. We, we know all that. You know, everyone knows that. But we're, what we're trying to get you to recognize is we don't play the germ, the game, Baccarat, or any game as far as that goes, whether it's blackjack or whatever we talk about on the forum. Long term, we're not looking for, we're not going to say, we're not going to play the same way every time, every game, and look for a long term advantage. We're looking for some bias that we can identify, whether we find it by accident, or it happens by accident, or whether it it happens for some reason it doesn't matter is we're looking to identify that short term in a game or to your point into into specifically a hand uh, a few hands now you know it's been my experience uh talking about system sellers and guys who design systems most people understood this and i think they were well intentioned okay is they went ahead and they looked at a game 
and they said, okay, I'm going to make this system that's going to beat this game. And that's pretty easy in hindsight if you think about it. But they tried to make it a little bit complex. And so they took the whole long-term advantage thing and they, they, they put it over a game. Now, they found a way to beat one game. But, of course, then they made the same mistake that everyone makes is they tried to take that and place it over the entirety of every game that they've ever played, you know. So what we're yeah. trying to do is, look, these little biases, they're only going to work in a short part of the shoe, usually. To your point, it's funny you mentioned about 10 hands, you know. Has that been your experience? Like, I find that, and I'm talking too much, forgive me, but I find that a bias will last, but there's a window of opportunity that you have to seize on. Do you find that to be the case? Yeah, there's there's generally a period of time in, in a shoe where you are ide- able to identify what the bias is, exploit it, but always being on the lookout for is it changing. Yes. But I can't say it's ten ten hands or five hands or uh, but that's not that's not a bias five hands you know. Right. Right. Um, it, it's usually one or two or you know uh, times in a shoe that it'll change. Yeah, absolutely. And I, there's a there's kind of like, I know we talk about trying to identify when it turns, so to speak. We call it the twist, you know, right there. And a lot of times, there are times when we'll say, well, it's right here. You can see it just went from this type of shoe to this type of shoe. And, and this was the trigger point. And, and that's the key is finding that moving target, finding that twist, finding that turn of what happens. And if you do then you can react to it in advance. And that's the key. I mean, hindsight is perfect. You can look at a shoe and say, well, I, I would have played time before last year or I would have played two in a row or most common uh, uh, in, in this game. But, of course, you're looking at a hindsight. What we're trying to get you to understand is to use the statistics to predict that so that you can grab a couple great bets uh, and do that. Now, what, what do you find is if you had, I don't want to say a favorite system, but what is the most reliable thing that you count on? The, the number one thing that's most important when you're watching a game, Kevin? What statistic? It, it, I would not say, Keith, that it is a very singular statistic. I would say that it is identifying among a number of statistics, okay, or a number of uh, things that you talked about time before last. Right. Uh, is is the opposite of that is uh, opposite time before last. Yeah, right. Uh, it, you know, um, which is called OTBL in Beat the Casino parlance. So the idea is identify is the shoe playing to one side or the other and is one side consistently increasing in value while the other one is just kind of maintaining or going down as a percentage of the number of events or plays. Okay, yeah, absolutely. But, but but I as you know, Keith, I don't focus on just time before last. No, or I know. opposites and repeats. I focus on a lot of things. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, you you're you're always tracking a, a bunch of statistics and and what's good is if you get a real strong one that that's tracking well and it's going in a certain direction, you identify that and then you have another one kind of a secondary one that's saying, "Look, in addition to this statistic, Here's another statistic I'm watching, and it's indicating that this is going to trend over the next couple hands or the next couple part of the shoe. So, so when that happens, you've got not just one thing telling you what to do, yeah, or suggesting what to do, but you've got two. Yeah, absolutely. And when you have that, that's that's even more powerful. Yeah. And sometimes absolutely. you've got three things that are telling you the same thing, whether it's player or bank. Yeah, absolutely. That's. Yeah. That's the for me. That's where the you ask me. That's where the magic comes from. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the magic is in the statistics. There's no doubt about that. And and the more proficient and and uh, and uh, efficient you can get at tracking the statistics and understanding what's going into a game, then the better off you absolutely are. And that, that's what we have at Beat the Casino. We have guys at the forum who have been doing that for years and years and years and years, and who understand what to look for in the game and how to identify it, and then how to jump on it, you know, make your chips, and then get out of the game, of course. And uh, that, that, that's the power of getting together with everyone, too. I, I know when we play together, 
And I know you play together with a lot of players in Las Vegas. I think every week you're telling me so and so's out here and so and so's out here, you know. And uh, we got together, we played at the Red Rock, we went to the Rampart, we went downtown, we went to the Gold Coast. But the power of it is to be able to sit there with another player and talk about what we talk about in the forum and then put your heads together and, and do it. I know that that's right. certainly the best way to learn uh, to play. And, and that's what we do at, at Beat the Casino. So, uh, you know, hats off to you for helping us out there quite a bit. So, uh, Kevin, you know, we have the uh, International Baccarat Symposium coming up too in Nassau and the Bahamas. I know we're making a big deal about it because it is a big deal. You get the opportunity to talk about all this stuff that we're, that we're espousing right. on the forum. And there's nothing like play sessions and sidebars, as you call them, and getting together and playing together. You know, I'm really looking forward to it. I know we had some other people sign up this week, so we're going to have a good crowd there. Uh, you know, I would encourage anyone who's serious about the game to come on out and, and join the forum and come to the Bahamas with us. I mean, you know, what, what, what do you have to lose, you know, <laughs> other than yeah. you wasting your money playing Baccarat, you know. So uh, come out and stop wasting your money and learn how to play from some of the pros. So I know you're going to – do you have your Bible going, Kevin? Yeah, I do. I've started it, and uh, whenever I think of something, I uh, jot it down on a piece of paper – um, which is the the fundamental part of the basis of the new Bible. Yeah, absolutely. No, so. no major changes, really just additions and uh -huh. um, helpful hints, uh, things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's real good. And you can look at it in the casino too, which is a nice thing. That's a great thing about Baccarat. You can sit there and yeah. you can you can sit there and write all you want and, and use it to your advantage. I mean, even even the scorecards, uh, uh the, the, the tote board and stuff when you walk by, you know, has value to, to certainly yes. look at things and uh, and whatnot, you know. I know we talk a lot about where's the best place to play and what statistics, you know. Uh, we played the Gold Coast last time a couple times. You know, the, it's it's uh, it's a great place to play because there's a lot of tables. Uh, one of the things, if you do play there, I think it's important to watch the colors they have there because they're not consistent. They use the green and the red, and uh, you you gave somebody a tip about playing there one time. That I thought was valuable. You well, two at things. The, yeah. Two things. Uh, number one, uh, to your point. Uh, typically in a Baccarat game, in most casinos, uh, the blue color represents player and the red color represents bank. Yeah. And at the Gold Coast, about half of the tables, that is true. <laughs> the other half of the tables, they'll use red for player and yellow for bank. Yeah. Yeah. So what they've done now, because it was confusing to people, at first they only had one or two tables that did that, but now half the tables do is they change the felt so the colors on the felt match the colors on the tote board. So you can see what's going on. Okay, so it's a little bit easier to play there. I know we had a great session. And again, it's a good place to play because you have the ability to walk around. And they allow you to do something there that's not that you can't do in a lot of other casinos. So far as betting over folks, I noticed that's right. uh, um, a lot of times. Uh, and, and, and that is that you can bet over somebody and place a bet beside their bet even if the table was full they let you do that, that that is correct yeah that's true and and the etiquette for that is never to bet against them whoever is is that, is that right kevin yeah whoever's shoulder you're leaning over leaning in on so to speak if the table is full if they're betting banker you don't wanna, you don't want to put a player bet yeah. on the same you know the same area there yeah, find a person player. that's betting player yeah okay and typically at any table, not everybody is betting the exact same thing, player or banker. Right. right. And it happens. It happens. And you know what I would say is if everybody's betting the same thing, I'd be looking pretty strongly for trying to figure out why. Yeah, because, amen, amen. Because maybe they've got it. Maybe somehow everybody looks at the, the tote board and the statistics differently. Maybe they're all seeing something different and they're all just coming to the same conclusion. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that, you know, that's a great way to play that statistic is uh, I think we call it follow the player or even follow the table, you know, however you want to call yes. it. You know, the only problem that folks make when doing that 
is they don't think it will ever end. You know, like you find a table, and you know there, I, you know maybe there's a bias for a streak, and everybody's betting it. You know, there's a ten in a row, and they keep pushing the envelope and pushing the envelope. And you know what's important to learn, and we, you know, is that it's not going to go on forever. You know, you, you can't just continually keep pushing the envelope for the game. And that's what we teach at, at Beat the Casino. Obviously, is what what is happening. That is is going to make this change. Now, if if it's a streak side, you know we may be looking at the score, the disparity in the score getting closer, or something along that line. Or it's like, look, this is a 15 in a row. Uh, while in theory it can go longer, uh, you know, you may want to take your 10 wins in a row and get out of there happy. You know, so uh, and a real important thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I know that's one of the places you play. Uh, you also play have a lot to say about the Rampart, Kevin and. They don't have a lot of games in there, but you've had a lot of success there, I think. Well, for a long time, they only had one. Table. And and most of the days it was reserved during the afternoon for a woman who would come in and play green chips. Oh, okay. So nobody else could play. So nobody oh. played it. Yeah, right. Including Why? me. <laughs> okay. More recently, they've gone to two tables, and now they have four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I, a lot of people are um, um, the Palms, for instance, which just did a five hundred million dollar renovation. Yeah, it looks nice. They have got so many baccarat players now. They're actually opening a baccarat pit. Oh, okay. I didn't see that, that last time. That will be separate from the other table areas. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yes, uh, and yeah. so it may be open. Uh, even as early as this week. I haven't been down there in about a week or so, so I don't know. Oh but my they goodness. were working on it heavily uh, uh, last week. I want to come out and see that. I know, like, the, the Rampart and the Gold Coast, they're kind of locals casinos, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Palms, I think, is kind of in the middle, you know. You know, a lot, you get a lot of locals there. You get a lot of people who come there. Uh, it got popular with, uh, earlier, a couple years ago, when they uh, filmed that series there, and, and it was kind of cool. And I guess Station Casino's, bought it and they yes. threw some money at it so I, i've always liked it it's always a good place to play we had a little issue with the layout of the uh stadium baccarat last time we were there it was a little too busy that I was think. at the palms that was at the palms yeah that, yes. that was uh, that's at the because palms. a station casinos uses a whole different felt than your average other casino yeah absolutely now that's the other reason the the other place that we miss and not to not to I mean I guess we're talking about Vegas now which is fine. The other place that we missed was uh, one of our favorite places to play. They kind of they closed up. Um, was the uh, Lucky Dragon? I think it was. Yes, uh, yes. I remember it was right across from the new casino they're building, uh, which is uh, 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 Vegas. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, um, you know it. Um, yeah, the uh, the Genting. Uh, group or that's called uh, resorts world resorts world yeah right across the street yes. there we, we used to love to play the lucky dragon out there they were very uh, friendly it was a great baccarat situation but unfortunately it's gone so we'll have to wait for uh uh for the other ones to open up but it, but again it's nice to hear that the palms is, is going ahead and building the baccarat pit it's certainly a great place to play um what about uh any um any casinos downtown kevin that i know I, I guess really the other one that we talk about a lot, and another great place to play Baccarat if you're interested, for our strategies, especially at Beat the Casino, is uh, the Palazzo and the Valician. The stadium there is just uh, fantastic. I know we love playing there. Uh, uh, yes. The layout, it's comfortable. Um, I know if you're, I always mix them up. Uh, we always tend to want to stay in the, do we play Palazzo. in the Palazzo? That's right. We play at the Palazzo, and uh, we see just a, a I forget how many games they broadcast at this point. Is it four? Well, they broadcast. They brought. They, Two. They, between the Venetian and the Palazzo, it's four. It's four. Yeah. So you can play four games at once. Yeah. So four. so it, yeah. Go ahead. So well, imagine going to the Gold Coast and walking around, and you can play eighteen games at once. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. So you, you know, obviously, you can't play every hand. But you can identify situational uh, uh, things that will help you, you know, pick up a unit here or a unit there, and pretty soon it adds up. Oh, it does. It's a great way to play. So anytime you can get into that situational, I guess that's a new term we'll use, situational <laughs> baccarat, 
is is you know kind of glancing at, at tables and analyzing statistics. Now you know you, right. you know one thing walking around you you have to you have to use the statistics that are available. Uh, you know opposite repeats, uh, uh, one in a row, two in a row. Those those basic statistics, but you don't get the the whole concept of the game. But it is because you have so much to choose from. You can pick and find really good biases to go ahead and bet into, and hopefully, uh, well, like strong side. Yeah, y'all, I mean, it's a great. A- that's yeah, a, that's a really easy one to identify when you're walking around and you've got 18 shoes. One of them is going to be exhibiting strong side at that very moment. Absolutely. I, 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 I promise you out of 18, one of them will have the strong side going. Yeah. You know, th- at least it, one. You know, and that's one of the, the one of the only few ways to play where you're actually only using one road system is you're actually just walking around. You, you can kind of turn the tables. You can just walk around and look for a strong side because – that, that's certainly one of the best biases to find, don't you agree, Kevin? I, I, that, I would agree. Yeah, and, that, it's usually, and that bias is usually TBL. Yeah, yeah, yes, it is. Time before last. Yep. Yeah, just just bet the strong side. Uh, a lot of a lot of folks like bet will bet repeats on strong side. You got to remember too when you're playing strong side. If it goes opposite for one, you just want to come back to the other side. You know, after one or two on the other side, and and go at it that yes. way too. So it's yes. it's certainly a great way to play. Yeah, you know, Kevin. Another topic I want to get into, and uh, you know, forgive me. Uh, we we don't want this to run too long, but uh, one of the things I want to talk about is, uh, you know, one of the ways the casino uh, beats, you know, the average player is they try to get you to become impulsive. They do everything they can to get you to become impulsive, give you booze, no, no. no you know, anything to get you to become impulsive, and. One of the things, I, I talked about it when I made the uh, consummate Baccarat approach, which kind of was the overview, and I know you helped us. Uh, you did the 87% solution. We made the video in Vegas with you teaching it in the uh, consummate Baccarat approach, by the way, which is available on Beat the Casino when you join us. It's a video series of four videos, five even, I think, uh, you included of, of, of training of uh, you know our concepts and how we look at games. But one of the things that I talked about in there was casinos try to make you impulsive. And I tied it into, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to it, I tied it into the most asked question I get about Baccarat, Kevin, is I want to make this my job, you know. Um, And I told yeah, I know. (laughs) You know, people think, uh, and play, you know, and I understand this, you know, I mean, when you watch people selling Baccarat systems and approaches, that's what they tell you, okay, is you can just do this, overlay this over any game you choose, and you're going to win, okay, so I, I wish it were that simple, but that aside, that's why we're a club, and we talk about strategies, and understand it's a moving target, but when you do that, even, even when you do that, you, you've, you've set yourself up to be impulsive, because when you have a job, you expect to get paid. <laughs> so if you happen to have a bad day or a day that's not going so well, what you'll what you'll do is you'll become impulsive and you'll overbet your bankroll. So you know when you're when you're first starting out, is I say, come join us and do the one thing that's most important is learn how to win. You know, learn how to take the statistics that we're talking about it, assimilate all this information. And learn how to win first, you know, and understand what it takes to get to that point. That's the first thing is keep it simple. Yeah, the discipline and patience uh, required to make truly uh, win consistently at Baccarat is pretty, uh, it's it's uh, uh, very similar to a job. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Uh, it's not just about showing up and punching the time clock. You know, um, you've got your own business. It's your money. Yep. Uh, and just like in a business, every decision that gets made has implications and um, um, outcomes that may sometimes not be your benefit. Yeah. But that's what business is all about: is trying to figure out your way through that you know uh, maze of choices and uh, uh, things that could change the business for the better. Yep. Absolutely. So so again, it it it, it takes uh, consistency. It takes. Uh, uh, discipline to your point and uh, you know all the things that we talk about at beat the casino okay last topic we got the I, I, I started to allude to it and I, I got sidetracked with 
all this conversation. I think it's good to talk about the, the casinos that we play at all the time. I think folks are interested in that, where to play, what's the best place to play uh, uh, and stuff. I think it's important stuff. But we got the International Bacra Symposium too, and we're going to be playing at the Baja Mar, that's for sure, <laughs> in uh, Nassau and the Bahamas coming up uh, on 10-4, <laughs> yes. which on, is on a Friday uh, will be the uh, – get together session but of course we'll play before that and at that after, after. that uh yeah. on on saturday and sunday in the bahamas so looking forward to that and uh we have some great stuff planned for there i know you're going to be talking um i will be and uh x.net is going to be talking about his tie box and yeah uh, greg gonna, yeah and greg is going to be talking about uh visual 5d which you can get on the forum now and, uh, you know, we have some other great players coming. To, who did I miss that I'm going to insult if I don't mention talking? We have Greg. Well, we have I, 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 yourself. Yeah, probably have to mention somebody from Australia, but, you know. Oh, my mention. God. <laughs> Do we have to? I, I get, uh, We have to mention Dixon. Okay, yeah. Come on, okay. mate. <laughs> Come on, mate. Come on over. We'll see you in the Bahamas, you know. Uh, you know he's he's a great guy, great player from Australia, Dixon. Uh, you know well, certainly. You know you mentioned that I played with people from Las Vegas, so or in Las Vegas. So we've got a, one of our players here right now um, from Baltimore, and he's here with his wife. So uh, they came out for dinner uh, with my wife and I last night, and then we went to a show. Right. And he mentioned out of the blue uh, that he's got a friend that plays regularly at the Atlantis, which is on, you've seen Atlantis yeah. and the Bahamas advertised on TV, and the Baja Mar, and the, he's described the Baja Mar as an unbelievable uh, uh, resort. Okay. So I we're think we're gonna really enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, how can you not yes. enjoy sun, sand, and beach, you know, playing Baccarat with, you know, uh, the camaraderie of our club, club getting together. And of course, the main thing is, we want to make some money there. We want to beat the game oh, and get together and put our heads together and, and talk about how we're going to beat these games in the Bahamas. And, uh, you know, who knows? Um, it might be so good we may go back the following month, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I certainly hope so. So looking forward to it. So anyway. Well, listen, Kevin, I think that'll wrap it up for us today here on, uh, you know, Beat the Casino channel. Uh, we want to keep everybody abreast. I, I, I'm glad uh, that everybody tunes in and watches us. Please let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, again, you can get all the information at uh, beatthecasino.com. Uh, join up. Join our club. Get the consummate Baccarat approach. Talk to Kevin and me. Go ahead, Kevin, please. Well, I just want to add something because I'm itching to say it. You just made a comment uh, about winning in the Bahamas. Yeah. Well, all, all the things we talk about, Keith, on the forum – are designed to be able to uh, translate yeah. to places anywhere in the world. It's not like Baccarat is uh, unique to uh, Las Vegas or Philadelphia or Atlantic City or Detroit or Canada or, you know, it, it's pretty much the same game everywhere. Yeah, it is. There might be, it, what's different is the garbage, what I call the garbage yeah. bits. Yeah, that's You know, true. the ties yeah. and the dragons and the pandas and the, you know, the the uh, 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 suited pairs and that, yeah, that's pair. where it's different among casinos. Yeah, absolutely. But player and banker, it's the same stuff. and repeats, OTBL and TBL, you got to know that stuff. You got to yeah. know it like, you know, it's, write it on your hand if you have to. Yeah, so when amen. you're playing, you can, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is happening. This is happening. You know, that's, that's, and, that's true. That's right. Absolutely. And, and, and then it should be... You know, equally applicable, like this gentleman from here from Baltimore. You know, um, he, he doesn't have as many casinos right around him uh, as as I happen to have in Las Vegas, or you know, we're down in Biloxi or uh, wherever. But nonetheless, the strategy, the, the the methodologies. I hate to call them strategies. The methodologies right. that you should employ, or at least be aware of, in order to win. They're the same in Baltimore or Atlantic City as they are here. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, Baltimore, speaking of, we might as well talk about casinos in Baltimore. I played down there a, bot, a little bit. He's got the, the horseshoe. And he played uh, there just recently, yeah. He's got the horseshoe. They have quite a few Baccarat tables. I know. <laughs> 
I played with uh, you know one of my favorite players plays there from from the casino. She's been with she's been with us for twenty five years. Is Bernadette? Okay. You know, I always talk about. I love Bernadette. I, I hope do. she's watching. Uh, she always plays. She's a great player to play with. She plays down in Baltimore, and then now they also have uh, you know the live in uh, Maryland live, I guess, and uh, the one in D.C. Which I did not get down to yet. I, I have to make a trip down there. The MGM in D.C. Uh, but there's so many places to go. So, you know, there are great right. places to play in Baltimore and, and, and the area surrounding, um, right. you know, and, and all over. Pennsylvania has quite a few casinos and whatnot. But to your point, your point I think you're making is no matter where you play, it's the same game. Get rid of all the fluff and the junk bets. Learn the basic concepts that we have at Beat the Casino. Get together with us, especially in the Bahamas coming up. So there you go. So Sounds good, Keith. All right, Kevin. Well, listen, thanks for chatting. We'll be back again soon. If you have any comments or questions, please let us know and put them in your comments below. All right, Kevin. Okay, you take care. Great seeing you. Good luck in Vegas there, buddy. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. See you.